Welcome to JAG TV. Today we are talking with Vice Admiral Crawford, the Judge Advocate General of the Navy, Rear Admiral Hannock, the Deputy Judge Advocate General of the Navy, and Master Chief Ritchie, the Command Master Chief. It's been about four months since the change of office. How has the transition been? Well, I feel the transition has been very smooth. Uh, I'm fortunate, frankly blessed, to have uh, Admiral Hannock, his colleague, and Master Chief Ritchie. Uh, the, this is a great team, and I'm, I'm just pleased to be a part of it. Uh, I think, thinking about being the JAG, it's, you have to think a little broader than I originally thought about. So you have to look outside of, uh, your, up from your desk, up from the, the trees, if you will, and kind of be more strategic and see how we need to, what we need to do as a legal organization to enable and support the Navy. So I'm very pleased with where we're going. Uh, in addition to uh, trying to help Admiral Crawford uh, in his role as uh, Judge Advocate General, um, I have a second function, which is now Commander Navy Legal Service Command. Uh, so in that transition, I was assisted greatly by the three Chiefs of Staff. Uh, Captain Karen Fisher-Anderson, who's the Chief of Staff for Victims Legal Counsel. She works in Jacksonville. Captain Lisa Sullivan, who's the Chief of Staff for the Defense Offices. She works in San Diego. And then uh, Captain Del Crandall, uh, who has now been uh, promoted to Rear Admiral and is serving as the Legal Counsel of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, he was replaced by Captain Tammy Tideswell, and all the chiefs of staff were very critical to my transition. Um, in addition, I'd say that I met um, individually, uh, telephone or VTC with all of the COs, and uh, that was very useful. Uh, but perhaps the most important for me was the chance to make some visits to the field. Um, I visited some East Coast offices, uh, Great Lakes, some West Coast. And for me, the exciting and informative part was really meeting with the civilians, the legal men, and the judge advocates in the field and seeing the great work that they're doing. And one added benefit, of course, uh, was that most of those trips I made with, uh, with Master Chief Ritchie. So for me, the uh, su successful transition has been uh, with the support of all the senior enlisted leaders and the other senior LNs that are in the, in the Navy JAG Corps. Uh, and my role as the JAG CMC is to advise both Admiral Crawford and Admiral Hannock on all enlisted matters. Uh, and it's all enlisted and not only legal men because we have so many great yeomen and other general duty sailors who are supporting our legal mission worldwide. Uh, I echo Admiral Hannock in the, in the great opportunity to have traveled. Uh, I recently got to see the Chief's Pinning and it was a great success. My only regret is that I couldn't see all 14 of our brand new chiefs pinned. For those unfamiliar with the Pentagon routine, can you tell us a little bit about your day? Do you still have time to read, work out? Um, there is no typical day at the Pentagon. Uh, every day is exciting. Every day is different. Uh, depends on the issue uh, and trying to anticipate what those issues are. And, and I would say the same is true about our uh, uh, judge advocates, legal men, and civilians in the fleet, that their days are full of, of issues that require their immediate attention and, and focus. Uh, but as I uh, have come to discover that you really have to dis develop good habits uh, as a junior officer, uh, because as you become more senior, your days become more complex, your time becomes less your own, and you have to understand how to manage that in order to achieve uh, what you're called to achieve. It's important to recognize that you have to take care of yourself, you have to exercise and stay healthy. And you have to, it has to always be about your family. Always be about your family. Um, C.N.O. Clark used to say, uh, mission first, family always, people always. And, and I agree with that. I think that's the best way to put that. So as you, as a junior officer, you need to develop those habits that enable you to prioritize and ensure that you're always thinking about your family as you're executing the mission. So Admiral Crawford talked about um, habits, and, the, and I agree they're very powerful. Uh, a few years ago, I developed the habit of starting every day with an early morning workout, um, and I continue to try to do that. Uh, in addition, I've tried to take advantage of what the fitness centers offer. And starting a few years ago at the Navy Yard, and then last year in Newport, and now at the Pentagon, I tried to take advantage of the fitness classes, um, including a couple of yoga classes per week that I found very helpful. 
Admiral Crawford, Crawford also talked about the, um, the day at the Pentagon. There's no typical day. Um, that's been my experience too, but what I try to do is carve out some part of every day and think about Naval Legal Service Command. And so I talk regularly with the Chiefs of Staff, I talk with the Commanding Officers, with Master Chief Ritchie, um, so that no matter what's happening, I have some part where I'm really tr truly focused uh, on Naval Legal Service Command. Admiral Crawford also mentioned family. Uh, my wife and I have two young children. Uh, we have a daughter who is almost five and a young boy who is uh, one and a half. And I find it's, you just have to make them a priority. Uh, like others in that situation, I find it's a challenge, um, but it's one we all have to work through and, um, and just keep that priority in mind. So my day is probably not any different than most SCLs out in the community. Uh, you come in with a well-laid plan that changes the minute the, the phone rings. And, and sometimes it's an issue, but my favorite phone calls are the Ellens that reach out and maybe they have a good idea or they just want to talk or get some career advice. And as an SEL, I always tried to have an open door policy. Uh, I feel like in this position, it's more of an open phone policy. So I would encourage uh, any LN to, or, or JAG even, to pick up the phone and, and give me a call. Um, I have a family as well. I have a husband. My, my kids are older, 24 and uh, 13. And I also have a, uh, a two-year-old puppy who is very much my family. And when I leave work, I try to leave work at work and focus on home when I'm home as much as I'm able to do and enjoy the time that we have together when we're there. Now that you've had a little time to assess where we are as a community, what do you hope to accomplish in your tenure? Well, the first thing I want to say is uh, we, have, we were very well placed by the work, the great work that Vice Admiral Dorenzi did uh, on the JAG 2025 strategic plan. And I believe that strategic plan has really set the appropriate course for us. And what I did early on was to take the CNO's, a CNO Richardson's plan, and take our strategic plan and overlay that to ensure that we were compatible, that we were supporting his priorities, and that we were consistent with the things that he felt were important. And I was, and we had that discussion together. And it was remarkable, without having looked at that plan, how in tune the JAG Corps 2025 plan is with his strategic vision. So I'm very pleased with that. What that requires us to do is not to become complacent. Uh, complacency, we can't be comfortable, can't be comfortable. Com comfortable, comfortability breeds complacency and that leads us to uh, not being in tune with our uh, principles. So we have to constantly assess, reassess, and be prepared to make changes where changes are, are dictated. Uh, nothing is ever written in stone. You have to always be flexible and be prepared to react and anticipate. And uh, I believe that where we are right now, uh, we will focus on continuing to build the, the structure of the JAG Corps consistent with supporting the Navy, the manpower growth that we have, ensure it's in the right place, ensure that we're assigning and aligning our people appropriately, training them and educating them appropriately, and setting them up for, uh, for success. Admiral Crawford mentioned the strategic plan, and one of the facets uh, in the plan is knowledge management. So one thing we want to do is to make knowledge management a part of our practice. Now some of that is technology, uh, SharePoint for example, and some of it is uh, workflow and processes to make sure we have them right. Um, so we're working that, um, that piece. In fact, we have, um, everybody's familiar with the JAG SharePoint uh, portal, and we would encourage anyone out there to visit the front office page um, and if you have some comments to make, please, uh, please submit them. Um, that brings up one other point, you know, the, the KM effort underlying it truly is the innovation that's present in the JAG Corps community. And it's noteworthy that Admiral Crawford recently approved a new annual award um, for innovation within the JAG Corps community. Um, and so, again, it's that innovation that's going to help us make knowledge management truly a part of the practice. So finally, we want to build a strong and resilient JAG Corps community. And that just simply means putting the right people in the right job uh, where the Navy needs them, giving them the, 
the time and the training and the tools they need to be successful and taking care of one another and we are one huge team and promoting that teamwork amongst one another using these tools that are being put in place. Your community is made up of civilians, enlisted, and officers, both, both active and reserve. This community works on a wide variety of issues. How do you prioritize the work, or set another way? What's important to Navy leadership? What's important to Navy leadership, in my view, is that uh, we maintain a JAG Corps that is fully capable at all times to deliver excellent legal solutions. Uh, our organization is composed, as you said, of excellent civilians, uh, legalmen, and judge advocates. Each one of those, each, each part of that triad is equally important. And we are called upon to ensure that each element of that triad has what it needs uh, to deliver uh, excellence to the fleet so that we can facilitate uh, military, naval, and joint operations. Another critical function is the military justice system. Uh, we know that uh, maintenance of that system is what enables a commander to keep good order discipline, uh, which in turn helps, the, helps us uh, keep the trust and confidence of the nation in the armed forces. Um, it's really critical for us to keep a system that's fair, effective, and efficient, and that protects the rights of all parties. Now, to do that, it requires um, everybody that's in the process, uh, the trial counsel, every defense counsel, every victim's legal counsel, the judges, uh, the appellate function, and then every staff judge advocate who works as part of the system. The last is legal assistance. And this is where the JAGs and the legal men and the civilians really get to impact a sailor's life personally on a positive note. Uh, and it prepares them to focus on the mission when the time comes uh, because they know that their family back home will be taken care of and their affairs will be in order. It's very important that we don't get so fixated on the day-to-day -day issues that we lose sight of one of the most critical things that we're called to do uh, for our leadership. And that is to ensure that we set the stage and, and prepare for our successors. Uh, if we focus too much on the day-to-day, -day, we'll lose sight of the fact that uh, it's really important that there is uh, a capability that continues beyond us. Uh, leadership, our present-day leadership is important, but it's more important that we set the stage for future leadership and leave them with a JAG Corps, a legal community, and civilian organization that is ready and able uh, to deliver uh, excellent solutions, legal solutions uh, to the Navy. Thank you all so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Admiral Crawford, would you like to add anything? Yes, I would. You know, I've, I mentioned that I spoke to uh, CNO uh, not long ago, and I told them I'd come up with three V's. And, and, and I thought about this uh, as I thought about this new role that I'm in. And uh, it sort of evolved from a uh, request from our prior uh, Chief of Naval Operations about how we as a JAG Corps could um, be even more, uh, add even more as an enabler. So I thought of it in three, three ways. So first, the JAG. The JAG has to be visible. Uh, as I said, it's larger. It's larger than our organization. You've got to get out outreach, and that outreach is, has to be beyond our lifelines. And one of the surprising things I found is that while I have considered the JAG Corps uh, an excellent organization over time, I'm finding that, that that reputation exceeds well beyond the Department of Defense. The second V is that our JAG Corps uh, has to be uh, vocal. Uh, we have to be out there enabling and speaking to the issues and articulating the positions that the Navy has taken, uh, that the Joint Force has taken. And finally, our individual judge advocates have to be vital to their uh, various organizations. They have to be an integral part of the day-to-day -day and look beyond, uh, as I said, those narrow issues and anticipate the needs of their commands. So thank you.